What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to do with you guys. This is the Steel Will Tenet. You can see right there T-E-N-E-T -E F30 is the model number. Uh, this knife was provided for review along with many other budget knives. Heavy quotes there because everybody defines budget differently. Uh, we'll go over price on this. This knife was provided to me for review by my friends over at Neves Knives, Jared and Karen Neves. If you guys have not checked out their channel, uh, you can, don't worry, I'll still be here. You can literally leave, go over, subscribe to their channel and come back. Uh, they're awesome, big part of the knife community and they're a growing channel, so I encourage you to go support them. They provided this along with many other awesome budget knives so that I can uh, have some good examples for my quest for the perfect budget knife series. And this one stood out to me um, after looking through everything, so uh, I definitely uh, am excited to talk about it today. Let's go ahead and get some measurements on this guy. Overall length, coming in at about 8 inches overall, maybe just a little shy of 8 inches. It looks to be maybe 7.9 inches overall. From tip to scale, you're looking at about 3.4 inches of blade, not quite 3.5 inches, and then on the actual cutting edge, you're looking at just a hair over three and a quarter, maybe 3.3 inches. There will be a link in the description if you decide you want to purchase this knife. I'll give my honest thoughts on it. Um, let me go ahead and give you guys an example of the action here. This has a finely tuned detent and is running on phosphor bronze, which is, in my opinion, really, really cool. I don't know if we can see completely in there. Let me, uh, let me get a flashlight. It's not gonna be super bright. Yeah, can you see in there? Phosphor bronze, that is awesome. I know a lot of you guys like bearings, but let me tell you, when you can get an action like this, whether you wanna do the push button or the light switch method, um, that's pretty cool. You don't have necessarily a drop shut action. It has that kind of frictiony feeling that you get with phosphor bronze, but I think that's important um, in a knife that you're actually gonna go out and, uh, and use, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, let's go ahead and do some size comparisons here before I get too far because I, uh, I started talking there about uh, action. I forgot that we didn't do the size comparisons. Uh, how about up against, oh, that was terrible. Let's try that again. How about up against the Ontario Rat Model 1? Rat 1 coming in at 8.6 inches overall, so you can see there Rat 1 a little bit bigger. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about up against the, ben the uh, Benchman Group Tillion or the Ritter Hogue? Uh, in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Eight inches over on the Ritter Hogue. So you can see there, we're coming in. I mean, this it's very similar in terms of profile. Obviously, we have a different blade shape, different handle shape. Very similar in terms of profile. You can see here that the lines are kind of the same, but it's just more angular on the tenant. And then the blade shape is kind of the same, but it's a little more angular and doesn't quite have that same thumb ramp. Uh, and it's just a hair shorter. Um, I can tell you that uh, right right away when I picked this up, I was like, it's kind of like a flipper Benchmade Griptilian is kind of what it feels like. So that was, I mean, it, it, it's definitely different, but that's that's what it made me think of. So good size comparison there. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3? Spyderco Para 3 coming in at uh, uh, seven and a quarter inches overall. So good sized knife, definitely. This is going to be a sweet spot for a lot of people. Let's go ahead and weigh it here real quick. You are looking at G10 and steel as far as the liners go. Um, you can see inside there, there is just a little bit, am I, yeah, there's a little bit of milling on the liners there, which is pretty cool. You also have some nice, not that this really has anything to do with weight reduction, but what are we doing here, camera? Nice chamfering there on the corners, definitely. Not overly thick G10, it feels fairly light coming in at 4.3 ounces. I believe that's pretty similar to the Ritter Hogue. Actually, the Ritter Hogue coming in a little bit heavier. 4.3 ounces, um, you know, considering the blade length you have on this guy is about 3.4 ounces. It's a little bit over an ounce and inch for those of you who think like that, but in terms of the carry profile and the overall weight, that is not something that bothers me in the slightest, so I think that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and talk about the anatomy of this knife. What we have here is a drop point blade. Almost kind of looks like a like it could be a clip point blade, but it's in my opinion, it's definitely a drop point blade. Um, you've got uh, a, uh, let's do the blade stock thickness actually. I'm, I'm almost certain this is gonna come in at 125 thousandths or very close to it. 140? 
I need to get some new calipers, guys. I don't know that I think that I believe that's a hundred and forty thousand. Yeah, the Spyderco PM2 definitely looks thicker. Let's try that again. We may we may go multiple episodes without using these calipers at all. I'm gonna say this is a hundred and thirty thousandths max. It's tell there we go. Yeah, hundred and thirty thousandths is definitely um, looks to be more the case. It does come down to a pretty. It feels pretty thin behind the edge. I mean, this is definitely a newer edge. This doesn't look like one that they've used a lot, though. They said all of their knives were users. This one looks to be pretty new and feels fairly thin down there. Definitely going to be great at EDC style tasks. You can see there, this is one of those where the flat only extends to about 50%, but it's also really high, which means there's lots of room to drop. And given that it's not super thick to begin with, you're coming down to a pretty fine edge. There's also nothing in the cutting path whatsoever. So you're free to cut, you know, right there, right in front of the sharpening choil, uh, all the way out to the tip. It doesn't matter where you cut. There's nothing that's going to get in your way. The edges are a little tiny. I, I mean, they're not super sharp. They're a little bit sharp. It's kind of what I expect on a budget knife. Just something to point out. Just a little bit sharp there. Um, you do have a reasonable material down to the tip. It's not super ultra pointy where I feel like it's going to break, but something to be cognizant about. I do not know what this coating is. I would imagine it's some type of actual coating. Uh, it does not look like paint, definitely, but I imagine it will also wear away with use. This is D2 steel, so not quite a stainless steel, 12% uh, chromium, but good enough. I mean, I've, I've come to find that D2 is not, you know, I, I think people get the impression that when you use D2 steel, it's like rust, it's like ultra rust prone. You, you have to be, you know, pretty like in, a, in an environment that is very prone to to causing that type of thing on a blade for that to be an issue. I have never had an issue. I, I have never applied. I mean, I, I'll tell you, the last time I put any oil on the rat was months ago, and I have I don't have a single spot of rust on that thing. I just wipe it off with a paper towel. Um, but your, uh, your um, experience is gonna vary depending on where you live and what you're using your knife for, so just be aware of it. Uh, but yeah, D2 is a great steel choice. It's one of the best choices for budget knives. I have no problem with that whatsoever. I do not know how this is heat treated, though I'm gonna I'm gonna assume like I do with all my reviews that it, it has been uh, heat treated optimally. I believe the optimal hardness range for D2 is somewhere around 61, 62, something like that. Um, so that's great. Moving down to the handle scales, you guys already heard me say I love the chamfering that they have done. This is honestly, this is like perfect. If you're not gonna go fully contoured, this is exactly how all G10 scales should be done. It's actually even better than what I see on like the rat line. I mean, there's not an issue with the way that this is done. And there's not an issue with the way it's done on the Spyderco Para 3. But if you're, you know, like uh, the standard scales on a PM2, those really blocky G10 scales, I hate those. And I see that a lot on budget knives. This, you know, sort of uh, like, like a shallow drop or this gradual drop towards the edge there um, makes it extremely comfortable and also looks nice. You know, combined with this peel ply pattern, it gives it kind of a nice little shadow box look. It really, really looks well done and it feels amazing in, in hand. There are no hot spots other than maybe just a little teeny tiny one there with the pocket clip. We'll talk about that in a sec, but really, really great. Love that. Very uh, medium light texturing on the scales. They're gonna provide a little bit of grip, but they're not gonna tear up your pants as much as some of the aggressive peel ply that you see on some Spyderco knives. Simple um, show side pivot there. There's no uh, adjustment um, uh, head on this side, but on this side you have a simple Torx head pivot. Looks to be a T8. Unfortunately, we have once again T6 screws. Like every other review that I do, T6 screws. I hate T6. <laughs> I just, they just don't like T6. Ugh. It's a big head, it's just a little tiny. Uh, it's, I mean, the screw head is large, it's just a little tiny. The body screws, in my opinion, should always be T8, and have a T8 or T10 pivot, that's just what I think. They did get the setup correct in terms of the hardware. I love this setup with the backspacer because there's only two screws on each side, and then you have a backspacer, so very minimal in terms of overall hardware. That's always nice. Um, from uh, the perspective of somebody who's going to be disassembling their knife often and cleaning it. You know, if you're actually going to be using your knife, you're probably going to be disassembling it and cleaning it, so that's really nice. The lanyard hole's in the perfect position. Nice, uh, nice size for 550. I really like how they did the backspacer. It's raised just a little bit. It's also been chamfered, and it just looks nice. Look at that. Look how they did that. It's really, really nice. It's only raised in the back, not right here. Comes all the way around to the front. 
Really nice in contrast with, uh, contrast with the black liners. I also really like how they did the liners. Um, it, uh, they're full steel liners that come all the way out to the lip. Um, so you get that additional benefit of strength and um, um, just overall um, durability, I guess. Not that the designs that have cartridge liners or recessed liners are necessarily weaker, but it's nice to have that feeling of solidity. And then they went ahead and milled it out, making it roughly about the same weight they would be if they weren't milled out and just set into the G10 scales. So, you know, it's like a point that I made on my um, uh, Quest for the Perfect Budget Knife series. It's probably less expensive to do that from a manufacturing standpoint, and it makes it easier for the aftermarket um, to create uh, custom scales. I mean, like these scales like this that are just flat and there's no milling down to the inside of them to accept some sort of cartridge liner, it'd be really easy for somebody to make custom scales like that. Or if Steel Will decided to make their own additional scales and sell them to us, they could. Uh, that's all beside the point. I really like this setup. This is my favorite setup in terms of liners and the G10. It's just simple. It's not complicated. It's easy to get apart and put back together. It's great. Um, Backspacer is great. Moving over to this side, it's much the same as the front, except you have the adjustment side on the pivot. Pocket clip is awesome. Uh, it's a deep carry, and the screws are uh, recessed into, uh, or they're flush with the top of that pocket clip, me meaning when you're trying to slide this in and out of your pocket, you don't have to fight it. It's with it's one hand, and it's going to carry in an excellent position right here. That's awesome. Barely anything sticking out. That's how this should be done. You got a little bit of a duck bill right here. I, my, I mean, when I'm holding this knife, my hand is va it's it's vaguely aware of it. The only time that it's really going to become a bother is if you're going to cut continuously with this thing without wearing gloves for like at least 15 minutes. Then yeah, that's going to dig into your hand a little bit. For the rest of us, just cutting open boxes and letters and doing little things little quick cuts and then putting it right back in our pocket you're not you're not going to notice it but great pocket clip design it's it's not overly wide it's not overly uh thin it's not overly long it's not overly short it's just a normal they didn't try to do anything special with the pocket clip it just works nice steel pocket clip matches the hardware in the liner i like it really really like it a lot the thing that i love the most about this is that it's actually got phosphor bronze in there if you watched my quest for the perfect budget knife series last uh this this most recent weekend the one where it's in green um i talked about how i think that's really important on a knife like this now i know how much you guys like bearings right when you can achieve a great action on phosphor bronze right you've got a great detent setup listen to this detent click very nice detent when you can achieve that on phosphor bronze i mean yeah, it's fun to be able to shake shake our knife shut, and it's always nice to have that nice quality feeling of smoothness. But when you can achieve that, you know, uh, uh, with phosphor bronze, then you have a knife that's fun to deploy and fun to play with, but at the same time is absolutely functional in an environment that's got a lot of gunk and debris and, and just crap in general. That's Phosphor bronze are universally better for, you know, an actual working tool in terms of a folding knife than bearings are. Bearings are great and they're they're plenty resilient. I think people are, are a little too worried about what can happen with bearings, you know, in a in a, an environment with like sand and mud and dirt. If that gets in there, yeah, it's gonna slow the action down. You can just take it apart and clean it out and it's fine. But with phosphor, phosphor bronze, you really, I mean, it takes so much more to slow down a knife on phosphor bronze. They're self-lubricating too. They're just generally tight enough that they don't, they, they just keep that kind of stuff out of there. So the fact that you've got this type of action in this knife is really, really impressive. In fact, the overall design of this thing is, is really just awesome to me. This is one of the better budget knives that I've seen out there lately. There's only a couple of things holding me back here. Um, and they're just minor, they're just minor things. I mean, all the way around, I'll say it right now, it's an excellent design. By the way, we didn't look at centering. This is a used knife, right? So it's a little bit off. I haven't tried to, to tighten it. Um, it's just a tiny bit off, but it's not owned by me. And it's, and you know, the, the uh, Jared and Kara told me like, hey, all, all these knives are users. So probably just do a little bit of tightening and it's gonna come right back over. In terms of lockup, it's absolutely solid up, down, left to right. It's, I mean, Steel Wheel has, you know, they, they uh, kind of um, uh, marked their place on the Knife World map with the, um, the cut jack. And uh, I didn't, I liked that knife. I didn't like the FRN. This, this would be much more preferable to me. Um, so yeah, I, I, I wouldn't expect any sort of blade play or anything like that from Steel Wheel. Fit and finish all the way around is just great. Everything's great. Um, I don't like the T6. That's not that big of a deal. Um, here's the, the other thing that I don't like. <laughs> I cannot find any other configuration of this knife except for this one, OD green and black. It's fine, it wouldn't be my first choice. My first choice would always be 
black G10, and a tumbled blade. That's just what I like. Um, some of you guys are really gonna like this setup. For the life of me, I cannot figure out why they would not offer this knife in some different color setups. Offer it in tan and black. I mean, it's like, those, those are the three most common colors when you come up with a knife design. It's like, what color should we offer on launch? Green, tan, black. What should we do for blades? Uh, do one coated and do one uncoated and make it D2. That, that would have been great. Uh, maybe they just were testing the waters with this design. I don't know how long it's been out. That's, the only, that's one of the only things I don't like about it is this, it's just in green and black. Um, but uh, that's really, that's honestly all I can complain about. Uh, you can find these knives online anywhere from $45 to about $55. I'm not going to complain about that price at all. That's, that's just fine. Um, I don't, I'm going to try and, you know, when I, when I link the, uh, the link for this knife, for anybody who wants to buy it, the link that you can click on in my description, I'm going to try and find, you know, make sure that I find a link that matches up with that price range, but that's what I was seeing them for. Um, I don't have an issue with that at all. This is a knife that I can recommend to everybody. So this knife is going to go on uh, two different playlists. It's going to go on Metal Complex's Most Recommended Knives, and it's also going to go on Cheap Knives I Like. This is an awesome knife. It'll make an excellent user. It's plenty durable, great blade shape, great handle design, great materials. It's, it should be really easy to disassemble despite it's, it's using the T6. The pocket clip is great. I mean, this is one of those knives where you just don't have to think about it. This is the best tools are tools that you can pull from your pocket, deploy it, use it, and put it away with one hand without having to think about it. You know, there's nothing else for you to mess with. There's nothing else for your brain to try and process while you're thinking about, you know, using that knife. There's nothing to get caught in the cutting path. It's just, that's just a great design. Um, I even don't, I don't really even mind where they put their logo, you know? I mean, everything's great. It doesn't say China on it. By the way, this is not an American-made knife. Steel Little Knives, this, this part of their line is made in China. They do have a, an upper tier that's Italy. Be a great candidate for an upper tier version. Be awesome to see this knife in M390 uh, and different colors of G10. Um, may, maybe they go ahead and put it on bearings for people who want that. And then they do kind of what they did with the cut jack and they, it's a $150, $160 knife or something like that. That would be sick. This is an awesome knife. And by the way, yes, you can get your hands all the way around it. Um, this is a knife that I would no, uh, have no reservations against using or bringing outside and you know using really hard. And it's a, the fact that it's a budget knife just makes it that much better. This is absolutely one of my favorite budget knives of all time, and I urge you to check it out. It stinks that you have to have it in black and green, unless I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's a version of it that's like green with satin, but if I check this out on Google and I looked for a little bit, this is the only version that I could find. If somebody knows of a different version or, or if I'm wrong, um, point it out and I'll pin it and that way people know. Um, but um, this, this is the only version as far as I know. Absolutely recommendable knife. This is awesome. Jared and Karen um, Neves, thank you so much. Again, like I said, if you haven't checked out Neves Knives, go over there and subscribe to them. They are awesome. That's going to be pretty much it for today's overview and review of this Steel Wheel Tenant. Guys, if you enjoyed this video or at least found it entertaining or informative, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out right here. Uh, and if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, you can go ahead and click that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more content coming. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.